Welcome back to the Listen Up Podcast, where we analyze a new album each week. I'm Jamie, and this week we've got me, Nick, <laughs> Jordan, February weather, and we are welcoming Nick's alleged twin, Samuel, to the show for the first time. Hello. He's also in a frat, too. Um, no, so that's false information. This week we're going to be taking a look at Steady Glow by In Her Own Words. Released in 2019, and it was picked by Samuel. Samuel, why did you choose this? Um, I really like this album. Well, the main reason I ch- I was kind of stumbling on what to pick because like I don't listen to a whole lot of music, but this was my top album of 2020, and out of four out of my five top songs of 2020 were from this album. So I was like, you know what, I should probably pick this. Yeah, yeah we don't listen to much music thing. either. Yeah, we don't really do that. <laughs> I actually don't even really like music that much. Like, <laughs> I pretty much just cool when everybody else does it. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I felt All like this was a really untapped music. market that would be easy to get into. <laughs> yeah, I really like country. Yeah, we, we did this raps in right now. Wait, we, sorry, we did this saying, podcast like... for for purely financial reasons because. We're, the podcast we make no money on. <laughs> we're, we're we're providing supply for the for the untapped demand Un- that is that is music that is music. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till the general population gets a hold of this one, man. Yeah, gonna yes, exactly. it's gonna be insane. Exactly. Um, That's hilarious. yeah, I mean, so I literally had never heard any of these songs, but it was. As soon as I played like the first one, I was like, "Oh, is this kind of music?" Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I liked it. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I actually kind of liked it too. Kind of liked it too. It was very reminiscent of like, uh, I don't know, like My Chemical Romance and shit like that. That I I knew a few songs by in middle school, but never actually listened to. Yeah. Yeah. But it was. Good. I was gonna say like two thousands, like pop punky kind of. Yeah, v- vibe, but it it was good. If that's the right yeah. analysis, I think so. I I think that I believe that this is what pop punk is, kind of. Yeah, that's so what that's what you Spotify classified as a as a. Okay. Oh really? Wow! I just well, like I guess I think that. I think one or and two of their right. songs were in a Spotify pop punk playlist, and I was like, okay, so I guess that's the. So this is music. so this yeah. is the pop punk that the kids talk about. I mean, I would say it's like... So this is Paramore, huh? (laughs) I do listen to, like, a lot of pop punk. And, like, one of the reasons why I like these guys is because they're still, like, kind of in that vein. But they're, like, some of their stuff just sounds more, like, different than other pop punk stuff. Like, it's still kind of there. But Mm -hmm. something about their sound, like, just differentiates them, in my opinion, from, like, other pop punk stuff. Yeah. I got you. Steven's a big pop punk guy, right? He's a big death metal guy, also. I actually oh, really? don't know if he's a pop punk guy. Well, he he likes like My Chemical Romance stuff, but uh, I think he airs more on the side of metal, like screamo. Gotcha. But I mean, pop pop punk is like a, I guess like a string from the from the string cheese of this section, you know? Yeah, I actually yes, <laughs> I, I a, do think I metaphor. understood that. <laughs> A good, string. good metaphor. <laughs> Damn, no need to get all philosophical on this. Never mind. No need to get political. Are you the oracle? <laughs> string cheese. Yes, I am. Political string cheese. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> um, wow, you really killed that one with the string cheese. We all just kind of stopped. Uh, I know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but so I, I did. That's, I did the, that's the climax like of music discourse. Is the string cheese analogy. That's just, they will never be a music better. Criticism. <laughs> <laughs> that was, we've that was the absolutely insane. Of what yeah, we yeah, can we, do. We, we I might as well just that. destroy the earth now. <laughs> and... Wait, you have that power? <laughs> oh, did I? Well, <laughs> he, he, it was just. I didn't realize. I just. 
<laughs> we're supposed to let it slip. <laughs> <laughs> you had the power to okay. destroy the earth. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I liked um, I liked how uh, the lead singer. There's so much melody in like the singing that you don't mm-hmm. get in. Um, like, there's still melody in rock singing, but this is like. I don't know. I mean, just straight up, just using a voice in a different way than a lot of other rock sounding things. And I think that might be one of the reasons why I liked it a lot. It was just so yeah. interesting hearing the uh, using hearing a singer use their voice leveled against or with the other stuff going on around them. It was really good because it wasn't quite screaming, but it's that the vein of like yeah higher pitched but not sounding unnatural kind of thing yeah uh-huh. and yeah. it was really good which is hard it's like to almost like, like yell singing yeah but but like a, a difficult line somewhere between the two that i actually i yeah. wound up really liking yeah the the best i can like equate to is that one song that goes like uh it's like we're going down, sugar something we're swinging. oh sugar we're going down yeah. by fall out sugar, boy we're going down swinging yeah, yeah i guess mm-hmm you know yeah, Patrick Stark does that a lot. That he does song. a lot of that same kind of stuff, especially in that era of Fall Out Boy, like the first three yeah. albums. I didn't mean like the new radio play Fall Out Boy. The, <laughs> no, You're talking, talking about Heaven's Gate? Gate? Talking about... Heaven's Gate? Never mind. Cool. I don't know any Fall Out. I, I thought I remembered one from like, high these school. Are, these are some <laughs> deep waters you get into. From high school, that probably would have been like, <laughs> like My centuries? Songs Know What You Did in the Dark. Yes. It would have been Save Rock and Roll era what, 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 was the one with demi lovato was on it too that one oh. feature i don't see i don't know vic would know that you know what I, it's okay it's, it's it's okay we don't we don't have to keep oh uh it. the um sunny with a chance what is it what i just said demi lovato <laughs> obviously that's yeah, so random she, she had that <laughs> no demi lovato was that's in so that random. tv show sunny Yes, but why are you bringing that up? That has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> Demi Lovato. <laughs> she she was in both of them. What are you not getting here? Um. Oh, it's called Irresistible. Uh, that was the song. If it's not, just FYI for all the listeners. It's, oh yeah, that's like this centuries. I I didn't like that album. And is it resistible? American, American Beauty is that the name of it? Uh, American yeah, Beauty, American that. Heartache. Is that the one with Uma like Thurman that? on it? I wasn't really a fan of that. I did like Uma they Thurman, but that's about the only Thurman. song. It had yeah. Centuries that got huge. Oh yeah, yeah. Centuries pretty good. Centuries See, Susie, yeah. Susie played it. I don't think the, the entirety of senior up. year on repeat, so I can't do that one anymore either. <laughs> oh yeah, that that probably would have gotten annoying. Um, but yeah, so this kind of reminded me of early Fall Out Boy, which I really enjoy. You know, Infinity on yeah. High. That's an excellent album. The entire way through. Um, I really like... I don't know. There was. There's also a lot of like um, double bass drum fills throughout the album, yeah. which just makes it feel like super heavy for no reason sometimes, but I kind of <laughs> yeah. dug it though. I was just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. That was one of my favorite parts of the album. I've noticed yeah, the, a trend. Do, 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 do. Like with, yeah, with them and the strokes and like, Pretty much any rock music that we do makes me like. I don't know. I I love the drums and most of it. I don't know. I don't know if. You know, I don't know like what older rock we've done that the drums have stood out to me off the top of my head. With we the strokes really in this album, especially. Older. Yeah, we haven't done a ton of, a ton of like straight up rock, right? Yeah, I mean like Kings of Leon, Black Keys. Yeah. But that's about the only like straight up rock stuff we've done. Mm-hmm. But I've, uh, yeah, I don't, it, maybe it's just lately I've been more into rhythm and and drum and bass and stuff. But I really enjoyed the the drums on this album too, and that's that's one of the reasons uh, I like February February weather mm-hmm. a lot. It's just because yeah, of I like the, that song a lot too. Like I feel like there's so many places where they change up the rhythms and like introduce like new minor sections into the song that are really like they're really just like verses verses and bridges and choruses but they just do 
like instrumental changes, like the second verse. I feel like they like double the speed of the drums. Yeah, the drums and, go hard in the yeah. second verse, but which took me is, off guard. Is this the first still time in I February weather. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorites on the album, I think. And it was like a it was an undercover one for me because I I think I'd heard like probably around half of the songs just riding with Samuel in his car, but uh, I don't I don't <laughs> think I don't think I had heard that one before. I don't know. That, in all honesty, was a song where at first I just kind of skipped it because I kind of thought it sounded more like general pop punk, so I didn't really give it a chance. And then I listened to it mm. all the way through one time, and I was like, "Wow, okay, this is actually a good song." And then I stopped skipping. <laughs> I, I, I really liked um, so many times the like pre-chorus lines in that one. I like that section a lot. Pre-chorus. Mm-hmm. What is what does that mean? I like the the. Oh, you say pre-chorus? Yeah. I thought you said pre-course. I was like, oh no, no, I don't know what that is. Yeah, okay, I never like mind. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, this was I think the for the first time in a, a few weeks, I actually had like really specific notes that stood out to me on this album, Interesting. and be, because of like the like the melodic. Oh my god, what the like melody? <laughs> what the mellow dick? Melodic. <laughs> there we go. Like the melodic <laughs> nature of the uh, singing. Especially the um, in out of focus, the like trying to stay afloat, caught in the undertow. I was like, Okay, that's out of nowhere and really interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, dude, I really li- like so the the song itself, "Steady Glow," the the titular track, one might Ooh. say. Uh, I think it's my favorite on the album. But there's just there's so much about about it that like I really like. I mean, even starting off with, like, the kind of bare-bones intro guitar line. The clock on the wall, it never stops ticking. It feels almost new, but I've been here before. I wait for your call, but it's never coming. I'm always running away. Um, like especially in that first section where th- it's not all of this stuff in yet, like the, like not everything is playing at max yeah. volume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, bro. And that song, it just I love the chorus of it. Um, and then there's like I think it's during the chorus. There's just like guitar shots, like ba 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 ba. Sure. I've been seeing your face in the steady glow. It sounds better than that, but that that <laughs> really good but dude, that's one of the songs where you can like feel the pain of the singer yeah. through. Through both the words and just like the delivery of it, where you're like, "Oh, this is like they wrote this about a close someone of theirs who died." It was really good, though. Yeah, kind I of fully realized it was crying on a on a dark drive. You know, crying, that's also my bro. favorite song on you the album. Crying, obviously. Yeah, it's really good. It it's been it's one of the ones that like it's just been stuck in my head like all week. 
I got when you. I was listening back to it, just like the way it was written, it like almost feels like the entire song is like an incline almost. Because like at first yeah. it's just like, like you were saying, not all the instruments, and then in the first chorus it like it keeps off all of the really loud and hard instruments until like the last part of the first chorus, and then like in the second chorus it brings them all in first and then it does the bridge thing and then it does like the really powerful like at the end where it's like just the guitar and then the drums in the background are like really kind of separated and then it goes into the final chorus yeah. that's i just really like that entire delivery and flow of the song you could just like mm-hmm. like you were saying you could just like feel the pain like really just through like that the dude sound it is it is really it's a very well written song for the yeah. message that it's delivering yeah, I'm so jealous. You guys can like pick apart songs because even even in music that I like, I can't even do that. Like, just like yeah, the the beat sounds good in all of this. Uh, <laughs> I can never be like. I mean, I'm trying to. I'm starting to start. I'm, I'm starting to. What? <laughs> what did I say? What song John title Legend. did I just say by John Legend? I don't know. I, I didn't I'm catch it. To? I don't think. Oh God. <laughs> Jamie, if you're not gonna add anything productive to this conversation, uh, shut Jamie's your mouth. Off the right? podcast. Yeah, uh, you, leave. I don't know. Leave the call. It's all of me is the song, but that's not what you said. It's not. <laughs> what, I was thinking of all of me, and then I was like, I don't think I said all of me. We just but, uh, we just weren't smart enough to, song, to get the joke. It's our fault. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah, um, well, <laughs> if no one else we'll, gets the message, it's it's the audience's we'll, fault, not the presenter. <laughs> We'll actually leave, and then you can well, you just learn stay in here a design and uh, do it by yourself. But now I was about to say, yeah, I like I like February weather a lot just because it did remind me of like the Fallout Boy kind of era. Mm-hmm. Um, I also liked Serotonin a lot. I feel like those were similar songs, but not the same, same, you know. But still had that. Uh, like I'd say, like Hum is a little bit more uh, mellow than uh, like the two above it or something. You know, it doesn't have as much like. Uh, drums. Yeah. Right? Hum is the hum yeah. is the really short I remember one, correctly. Right? Yeah, hum, hum is the intro hum to is, Rose yeah, Hum is like the intro, but it flows. It's like an intro to the song right after it, and it. Oh, you don't I didn't even know the track list. It sounds like one song. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so I, I I didn't even realize it was like. Yeah, Rose I didn't even realize it was like forty seconds long. <laughs> yeah. Is it Rose by the Ocean? Is that the one? Yeah. That's the Rose by the Ocean. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably what you're actually talking about. So that one actually does sound a little bit more. I, I for some reason I thought hum. I I don't know why I didn't look at this timestamp because I was just listening through my headphones. Yeah, it was just like I was like, oh, that whole song hum is just really like very like non instrumental, very like just not like plain because it's it's still like decent, but like you know, it doesn't have like the vibrancy that like all the a couple of the other songs that already came before it had. You know, so I was like, oh, this one's a little less. But yeah. now I see that's. Because I was going to make a note of that, because song, but... in Rosé by the Ocean, it starts off, so it sounds like hum is the whole way, and there's a point yeah. where it does switch. So Yeah. But, so that's probably where you think the song switch, but it's actually like a minute before that. I get what you mean. And it's really funny that you say that you like serotonin as well as February weather because they're kind of similar. Because February weather is like one of my favorite tracks on the album, and I mm-hmm. don't like serotonin. Really? Really? <laughs> so that's so weird that, like, yeah. I don't know. And I, and I don't really know why. It just it wasn't one that, like, I think because I enjoyed Out of Focus and I enjoyed February weather so much. Huh. Like, but whenever it would be time for serotonin, I just be like, eh, okay, let's you know, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. Like, that's you weird. really enjoy the previous song, and then you get to like the dip, and you're like, okay, I just want to listen to the next song because I know what the next song is. Right. I feel that it, it's hard it to exaggerate the, the uh, of the one. It song. exaggerates the valley, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. That's how I, I was with Avery Wood because I wanted to listen to Rose by the Ocean. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Rosé by the Wait, Ocean, it's, it's actually like... February... Do what? 
I was, I was doing the meme with like the space. It's like, wait, oh, okay. it's all February weather. <laughs> Always has been. Sorry, I was, I was, I was being stupid. So you could, nah. you could continue to talk. But I was just saying, like, "Rose by the Ocean" is like actually, it's actually a super sad song too. It's just a really big. The whole song is a metaphor. Because, like, yeah. if you watch the music video, like, it's called Rosé by the Ocean because it's about a girl, like, ODing in a bathtub with rosé and pills. So, like, that's why it's mm. called Rosé by the Ocean. And then if you, like, actually pay attention to the lyrics, it's, like, actually a really sad but, like, powerful song. So that's one reason why it's another one of my favorites on the track, just because, like, I really like songs that, like, tell stories and, like, provoke a lot of yeah. feeling, even if, like... Yeah. admittedly the instrumentation in that song isn't like as complex or maybe even as good as some of the other ones but i can still just like really really like that song but i got you yeah i like it a lot that's all i, I had nothing more <laughs> i'm sorry you just everything you, i was gonna say you're i'm I sorry really your, you your mouth it. was full when you said that too and i was like God, damn it, bro I, I cleverly <laughs> muted myself by this point they don't know i'm eating tacos right now uh-huh sure <laughs> But uh, no, I did. I, I didn't. I couldn't. I didn't dissect the lyrics that much. But I definitely. I I should. I should watch the music video now because it actually sounds pretty pretty interesting. Um, what else, Nick? What 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 songs did stood out to you? Because I don't. I I mean I know you like February weather a lot, but like yeah, I really any... like. I really like February weather. Uh, steady glow. Um, right. Dude, now. you're just no, copying wait, no. your brother now, man. <laughs> Come on. Dude. We are. It's alleged twins. Never alleged. been, never been proven. <laughs> except, except he's his brother's in a frat. Sam, Sam's in a frat. So. I'm not in a frat. <laughs> dude, you have told we, me you're yeah. a frat. Nick keeps saying you're a fraternal twin, dude. All right, he keeps, he keeps telling me that. <laughs> I'm yeah, so we're, dumb. We're dude. fraternal twins, but he's the only one who's in a frat. I'm the exactly. Yeah. Well, see, you you refer to him as a fraternal twin, so then I'm just like, oh, he's the one in the frat. You know, you're never like, hey, I'm a fraternal twin. You know, you're just like, okay, yeah. okay, gotcha. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but I I also yeah. liked uh, Alone with You and uh, and I like Disaster Case too, and that's what I have on my notes. It's hard for me to remember what the course of Disaster Case sounds like right now but i remember it being one of my favorites on the album But alone with you, yeah. listen to that Again. on the on the way back here tonight, and that's uh, that's always been one of my favorites uh, on the album. That was one that Samuel would, used to play in the car and stuff. I think it's their second. Aww. I think it's their second most popular one. After them, uh, is it like okay. that's overall? Okay. In, yeah, Spotify streams, and I think the most popular is right now. Yeah, the reason why right now it's their most popular one is because that was actually on the album before this album too, and they're just like I think they read uh, it. It's, it's like a Dior situation. It I is. It is a deal situation. Oh, <laughs> it's not better. Dude, right now is <laughs> really good. Be that that's one of my favorites on this album, and I guess the other one. Just the I'm the, <laughs> and it it's the most exemplary in my head of like what this kind of music sounds like. Yeah, for sure. Like in my head, pop punk is that style of vocal, that style of instrumentation. Okay, but yeah, like, I could, I, I, and even the I, starting I move that. of like, you said, "What am I supposed to do?" Because I'm drowning in inches of water with you, and what am I supposed to say? You know you're the reason I'm acting this way. And you were there when I was in over my head. What up? Like just the vocals. Before Where are we going? And they tell me, tell me, Timmy. Went. But I love it. I love that song. <laughs> that song is great. Yeah, I was gonna say I do like like the fast pace or the faster pace. I was about to say the fast pacement of it all, but no, I, I like the fast, <laughs> the faster pace uh, music, um, which is why I didn't like some of the songs. Like 
Okay, I'm, I'm just going to call Hum a song because it technically is a song on here. Technically. Um, I also wonder was a little bit... Uh, I mean, it, get, it gets a little faster towards the end, but Wonder's pretty slow for a good part of the whole song. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of any any other ones. Uh, most of them got pretty quick. Yeah. At least towards the beginning, um, because it is pop punk and that is their style. So overall, I liked a lot of the songs, at least like the pace of pacing of them. And then like like I said, like some like February weather serotonin. And I, I, I did actually like right now too, looking back on it, a couple of them kind of met, meshed together for me at the end yeah. there because I was, I was doing something while I was listening to this album. So I wasn't like, I wasn't super, super concentrated like when it uh, switched or whatever, but I, 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 I did like right now a lot. So. I will say this is, I think one of the, the weirder uh, occurrences right now, but I'm going to agree with you that... <laughs> I also what? didn't really enjoy the slower songs on this album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoyed it right. more. Like, I didn't really like Wonder and Delicate anywhere yeah. near yeah. as much as I like the, like, just faster ones. That's yeah, how I felt, exactly. too. Yeah, yeah. And I think but it's just because was... it put me in the mood to hear that, like, driving yeah. rhythm. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think this album was Once like... Once you go fast paced, you can never go back. Sorry, Sam, go, go. I think it was like a little bit more experimental for them because I think Wonder was just like them proving that like, they like, hey, we can do a ballad. Like, and bas- right. and like the last song on the album do. was yeah. Sleep It Off was like an acoustic song too. So like, I think it was yeah. them like yeah. just trying to prove like, hey, we can do some other stuff, which like some of that is also reflected in the lyrics of the first song, I think. Yeah. But, Yeah. When you say, do you mean like, like experimentation is reflected in the lyrics of the first song? Well, no, I was ballad? like, I'm just to think of how to explain this. Like, I think in some of the lyrics of the first song, at least the way I interpret it, like, well, I really like the opening line. It's like, what if we were wasting all our precious time? We're trying to stay between the lines. And like, what if this mm-hmm. was for like for nothing at all? What if we've been wasting all our precious time? We're trying to stay. And like that's one of my favorite lines from the whole album just because that's something I just believe in is like be yourself, don't try to stay between the lines. But like the more I like actually read the lyrics of the song, I thought it was like them kind of singing about like their own band and like trying to like kind of break out of the lines like of pop punk. That's at least how I kind of gathered or what I gathered from it. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 hard to break out sometimes, especially when you have a fan base that loves your music already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, we might just get a lot of hate for this. Or like, well, <laughs> one, hate, and two, just like, I'm sure bands like their music being played, you know? And yeah. they yeah, make right. That's how you make that money. people don't like. I know. Well, I didn't. I didn't want to directly just mention that they love the money, <laughs> so they're gonna make well, music. Which I probably it's not that like yeah. you love money, but <laughs> no, I know. I know. But most but musicians yeah, are just those, <laughs> just money. They, just, they, they make music for the money. But uh, no, I was saying like yeah. So I can definitely see how it would get a. Uh, I can definitely see how it would be a challenge because I don't even know. Actually, I guess that goes with any content creator. Actually, like people get famous off of one thing, and then it's like. After that's been cycled through, you know what's what's the next uh, step for them, you know? Yeah, I. And, but I think it's good in the long run, though. It's like what happens to like child stars, you know, the same kind of thing where. You Is know, that Miley Cyrus naked on a wrecking ball over there? <laughs> what is she doing? Where she must take some some Molly or something. Dude. It's it, it. It can be very uh, you know like tumultuous being in the public eye, but yeah, I mean, and that's like uh, that's why I always will support bands doing that because it Mm. you know it it makes you it it still enables creativity instead of um stifling it because if you do the same thing for four or five albums in a row then it's 
if you if you run that its course, like if you run that dry, and you mm-hmm. keep doing it, no one's gonna like it. You're gonna hate it. You're gonna end it. Which is, but, but like, you know, Mumford and Sons, they did that. Bob Dylan's like the classic example of that. You know, he went electric. People mm-hmm. lost, like everyone lost their shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Mumford and Sons, they had two very like folky bluegrassy albums which are awesome both of them excellent albums um and then their third one they added like they kind of went electric but they still also have banjo and an upright bass but yeah. also electric guitar um and that and they're fine you know wilder I st- mind i still like the uh, wilder mind a fair amount is it delta yeah but is i i didn't one? like delta a whole lot yeah Oof. And, and they they were fine but i was like there were people who were mad, and I was like, well, this just means that, like, they're staying together as a band, and they're still touring <laughs> and yeah. performing their old stuff. Like, I saw them on the Wilder Minds tour, and they played yeah. a lot of their older music, because yeah. they still enjoy playing that, but it's like, you know, you want to get creative in the studio, like Cage the Elephant. If you listen yeah. to uh, Melophobia, was their third album, their first two are very different. And Melophobia is where they start to do more just like artsy shit, but it's it's really good. It's an excellent album. I that and their first album for me are my favorites from them. Um, and then they made Unpeeled a few albums later, and I hate it. <laughs> uh, and you can, that's, you know, that's but Social Cues is, is pretty decent. Their newest one. That's one reason I've okay. always loved uh, Sturgill Sturgill Simpson. It's just because yeah, he tries to do that like you. every album, right? Yeah, his uh, like I don't even know if he, I don't know if he personally makes a point of it or if, like I I think he's always been like a screw genres kind of guy. Like I'm gonna make music that I think sounds good. Yeah, and so his his mm-hmm. albums go like, like older country music to like somewhat <laughs> psychedelic country music, but really really only turtles all the way down is kind of a psychedelic country song, and the rest of it is like kind of unique country music. And then it's like jazzy, soulful country music. Then it's southern rock with a ton of synthesizers. And then it's yeah. two bluegrass albums back to back. So it's it's all very interesting. Yeah. Was, was Turtles All the Way Down based on the John Green book or was the John Green book based on the album? I'm pretty I sure that they're just an expression. exclusive. It's an expression that I think both of them uh, are based on. Yeah. Have we already had this conversation, I feel like? Probably. I don't know. But I just I don't I feel know like I remember asking this question. Cause... Turtle all the way down. Yeah, what turtle? What is the expression? Turtles. I don't know. I just I, I think it's an old expression. But let's. How about you guys talk about the album and I'll Google what it means. <laughs> Which album? I was gonna do it. The the new the one we're supposed to be talking about before we started talking about uh, <laughs> everything except yeah it. I uh <laughs> well I. <laughs> you said you really like it right now, right? I yeah, do. But you kind of yeah. talked about that and like why you like it. Um, yeah, just like the intro section and then the uh, drowning in inches of water with you. Uh-huh. I actually like. There's that also a really lot. good drum beat in that one. Yeah. Which one is it? Sorry, I the, um, it's in right just, now. Okay, okay. It's like okay. what am so? What, what are we supposed to do? Tell me what like, I'm supposed to do because I'm drowning, drowning in, in inches, inches of water, water with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His voice also has that really exaggerated, like up and down. You know, I think I think you were talking about it earlier, Jamie. Yeah, where um, it's just it's super emphatic and like nowhere, yeah. in, like it's just so many different tones. And it, yes, uh, it's just... yeah, but the drowning in inches of water, something that you think should be harmless, it's killing yeah. you. Yeah, that that was a good, cool. That's line. that's good. Uh, what is it? A, I don't know, dude. You're the one speak, talking. It's like a, it's like, kind of like it's like a metaphor, but there's something that it's good illustrative language. There's another nice yes. little one-liner like that in um, serotonin, where he says, mm. um, God, where is it? Where is it? It's in. It's like the end of the bridge. I think he says, "I'm dissecting your white lies. They light up the dark side of you." Like, 
I had to think about it for a second. I was like, what is that? Oh, okay, that's actually that's actually some cool lines. He like plays on the white, like white lies, and then lighting up the dark side of the person because like she's lying. That was I don't know. That was just a cool little one liner. Yeah. So is it? I di- I didn't really uh, research that much. It, does the is the singer the one who is he like the main songwriter? I think so. I'm not sure. I also yeah. probably should have researched that more, but I didn't research that a lot either. <laughs> yeah, whoever writes them, they're they're a very good songwriter. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of really good, like, figurative language. and I was also one, kind of wondering where uh, In Her Own Words came from as a band, too, because that's kind of a weird band uh, name. In my, yeah. n- not, not that there's not, like, weird band titles, because there's literally, like, Rainbow Kid and Surprise, and then I call, like, <laughs> this band name weird. But it's just, like, it super. seems so, like, it seems so simple, whereas most band names are like, kind of, like, crazy or just kind of, like, out there or the the names of the singers too like in rap are just carnivorous b you know and and Nicki minaj you know it's just kind of it's it's interesting in her own words like was that based off of a person that they had in their lives or this is just speculation also by the way i I don't know i'm looking right now to see if i can uh yeah i'm researching from la right now too yeah Mm -hmm. la dang so turtles all the way down infinite regress dude we already know yeah i guess you googled it too (laughs) just kidding sorry continue (laughs) but yeah so it's an expression of the problem of infinite regress it alludes to like the idea of a world turtle and the the world like sitting on a turtle's back and then like and then that turtle being on like a larger turtle's back like uh I feel like I'm gonna have to read more things to fundamentally understand what this expression is. Bro, this <laughs> is like a this Did is like a weird like stadiums? a Hilbert's Hotel or whatever it is. It's like what? a Did you say War Turtle? War Turtle? Hubert's like, Hotel. Like like the Pokemon? Oh, dude, the bur- no, what is <laughs> War it? Turtle. The, uh... War Turtle. Also, the lead singer what? looks exactly like what I thought he would. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Joey, Joey Fleming. Fleming. Yeah. No, what it's it's the the hotel that's got like infinite rooms. I didn't pay that much attention in philosophy. We know this, but it's like a thought. Uh, yeah, we know this. Like, we know this. <laughs> the trolley what was problem. There again? No, just I think a flat C. Was it? Are you, wait, were you talking about the trolley po- problem? No, it's not no the, way the trolley problem. The trolley <laughs> it's like <laughs> I was about to say that that was a V for a while. <laughs> If a trolley oh, wore pants, trolley would it problem. wear it like this or like this? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's 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 Hilbert's Hotel. It's a paradox of infinite rooms and infinite people or something. Well, they have room or something. I don't know. Man. And then it's like the... <laughs> The om- the uh, so much of philosophy I don't like, but it makes really good memes. True, <laughs> like the um and and thus a fragment of the true self remains in the false body or something like that. That was a good meme for a while. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was way better than taking kind of... philosophy intro to philosophy. Honestly, yeah, I, you, I all you need to do is read trolley like, problems. Just, and... I find right, it so strange that I enjoyed my philosophy class like so much. Like I, I would probably take more philosophy classes. It just means your head ass. <laughs> no, that's not what that means. <laughs> Agreed. No, I think Agreed. the more surprising I've been thing listening to some heady music is that I liked it so much less than I thought I would. Yeah. Like I figured, I would that would have been right on my alley. Like thinking about shit. Maybe, but it was just, just like lazy. it was asking questions that I don't care if there's an answer. To. <laughs> That's what all philosophy is, though. <laughs> yeah, but like some and some of it's valid, you know, like the the philosophy, yeah. of ethics, and stuff. But other ones, it's like, how do I know that this desk is real? Who cares? Just use the desk. <laughs> you know. Bro, you're you're too you're too mean for philosophy, dude. Sometimes sometimes you gotta you, you gotta think about that. You know? No, you don't. Just use the desk. Is the desk. desk real? What if it's not? Then what happens? 
then it doesn't matter because then none of us are. Who cares? Interesting. Do you want to talk about that more? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I, I, I really I enjoy like it, psychology though. and philosophy. They they go in hand, hand in hand sometimes too, but it just depends. Zach's big on like cognitive science. Oh, I love cognitive. I was about science. to explain turtles all the way down, but it's too far. It's okay, bro. We <laughs> we got you, all right. We <laughs> we got Nick's you. become Nick's infinitely regressing right now. <laughs> Shit, he's gonna go catatonic. No. Um. Oh my god, what was that? I hope you can hear that thump in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't have any more, like, specific notes. I don't think I do either. Do, do any of you, you want to go? I don't I don't think I do either. I just... Any old final? Yeah. Little just for, like, do you have any favorite? Final. I was going to say, for, like, as a recap, I was just going to say, like, can y'all list your favorite songs from the album one more time? I'm just mm-hmm. interested. Yeah, I liked uh, February Weather, Rosé by the Ocean, Steady Glow, Right Now, and Out of Focus. My top five in no particular order. Maybe okay. Study Glow is number one. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know. I'll say uh, Serotonin I liked a lot. Uh, February Weather I liked a lot. Um, you guys remind me I like right now. I probably would. I I, I mean, it. it I, I, I like it. But then I also like Alone With You a lot, too. Yeah. Hmm. And I liked, uh, I liked February Weather, Steady Glow, Disaster Case, and Alone With You. And I remembered uh, after I listened to it again, I like Disaster Case a lot because uh, it's just really up tempo and the drums are like really prominent in the song to me, just because of the the fast pace that they generated. And uh, yeah, the, I got you. <clears throat> the final note I have, I think, that I forgot to say, um, is in the chorus of "Alone with You," when he says, "When he says fix me," I should have wrote down what he says before he says fix me. I just have what says after. Haha, <laughs> silly. I was slurring all my words, trying to keep it all together, wishing that my best was better. Fix me. Yeah, That's yeah. what he says. Uh, Taking he says, something Whoa. stronger to numb the pain, something like that? Yeah, hey, he says, Same wishing. Just recall from memory. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy went rain, man, and he just, like, his eyes rolled back into his head. <laughs> and he just. He said, <laughs> I, got, I got some hours in this funny. album, boys. <laughs> but yeah, he says, he says, wishing that my best was better fix me and then it kind of pauses and when he says fix me he like i feel like he says it a little louder he like draws it out and there's emphasis there and the the fix me kind of doubles in in the sense that it stands out independently from the rest of the sentence and then it feeds into the rest of the line where he says fix me something strong to dull my nerves that's a i never noticed that yeah (laughs) it's just a, a mark of a mark of uh like better than amateur songwriting pretty good songwriting they, they've they been at it for a for a good bit you know yeah i think two, nah, th- I mean, 2007 is what it looked like was their first at least like release okay. i didn't even look or something gotcha. yeah i got you but that was that was all i had so. sammy I what, think my your, favorites... what are your top tracks yeah my favorite from the album the one that stands out like above the rest of them is steady glow just like that one's a little bit higher than the rest and then right under that i would put um rose by the ocean and serotonin and then just a little bit under those i would put like basically all the other songs that aren't their slower songs and then a little bit <laughs> under those would be their slower songs <laughs> yeah. i got you yeah but what are so i guess d- does anyone have any final thoughts before we give it a a rating any, any lasting impressions i think i'm good i think i'm good i think i pretty much said everything i wanted to say all right well then i guess we'll give this one a number um so samuel you can start off and then i start nick off. and jordan you can figure Let's it out and then i'll announce uh this next what week. we do every week jordan and i fight to the death every <laughs> week to try and figure out who's gonna Who's going to say their rating first? Yeah, we've had to use a we lot to, of... I actually don't know, Mark. I, 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 I need like 10 more seconds to think about it. All right. Well, okay. I guess <laughs> well, well Samuel's going to... I think Samuel's going to take more than 10 seconds to say to, his rating. So. Yeah. I would give this album 
a very solid 8 out of 10, and maybe even okay. a 9 out of 10. I'm going to say 8.5, because, like, if all okay. of the songs okay. were written as well and, like, as good to me as Steady Glow was, it would be, like, a 10 out of 10 in my book, just because oh. this is, like, my favorite genre of music, and just, like, whenever I first heard these guys, like, something just clicked, I was like, this is... Like, I've never heard anything like this before, and it's just, like, my favorite type of music to listen to. Like, there are other pop punk that, like, kind of fills it, too, but just something about these guys just fills it better. But, yeah, if everything was as good as Steady Glow was, I would give it a 10 out of 10, and I'm only giving it an 8 out of 10 just because, like, the slower songs, 8.5, I guess, the slower songs just kind of bring it a little bit down. But the whole album is still yeah. really good to listen to, and, like, it really shines in certain spots, so... Eight and a half. Yeah, I got you. I mean, I would say that I would agree with that because, like, I don't like as a genre. I don't really enjoy most pop punk kind of stuff that I hear, and so that's why when I f- f- heard the first few lines of the start of the album, I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, by the time I finished my first listen to the album, I was like, "Okay, I actually like really like this." So yeah, it was, I had a similar uh, kind of experience with this band. All right, um, Nick, I guess you can go because Jordan hasn't had his 10 seconds yet. So <laughs> Now I have had my 10 seconds. It's too late. I'm going. <laughs> Time is an illusion. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give it... I'm going to give it a, a five and a half because I... Because like, oh. uh, like, I, like I said last week with, uh, with Jesse's album that he picked, Remains by Bones, like... I think I gave that a five because I was like, yeah. I, I wouldn't ask someone to like turn this off in the car. Like it, it's not like bad. It just doesn't really fit my personal taste. And I, I would probably like, I could listen to like half these songs, like putting them on myself, but the other half, I'm just not like a super huge fan of, but, but I, I appreciate what they're going for. And they really do hit some, some good virtuosic technical drum stuff that I, that I admired. <laughs> Virtuosity. Yeah, it just means. Well, I can't believe Nick hates this album so much. (laughs) (laughs) Virtuosity is is just a big word that I learned in my music class that means, like, technically good. Oh, okay. It means you're a virtuoso. Nice, nice. I never even connected that that, that's where the word, like, comes from. You can't use that word anymore. You don't. You you lost that word. (laughs) Jordan, what's uh, what's your verdict? I honestly was also going to give it a five and a half. Just straight. A straight I, I, first, I was going to give it a five. Jordan's copying. <laughs> then I was going to give it a six. Then I was like, I think I should just give it a five and a half. So I should have gone first. So Nick would be the one copying me. But uh, sadly, I didn't. But yeah, I'm giving it a five and a half. Uh, because I also, I think for the same reason, but different songs choices. Um, I like the style of a lot of them. But then... Pretty much what Samuel said too. The the lower songs kind of feel like a little out of place. Not that they can't be here. Yeah. But uh, just when listening to the whole album, it seems a little out of place. Why I do you do that? <laughs> I I concurred. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right now, bro. He's off the zoinky, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. I really like this one. Okay. Interesting. I okay. It. Yeah, okay. I yeah, I think the last one I gave a seven and a half was AM. Yeah, I enjoy okay. this. I mean I don't like there are a few on here that I wouldn't just put on. Like if I had if I had like mixed the album I would have taken them off. But mm-hmm. I really like some songs on here, like quite a lot. Uh so yeah, seven and a half. I feel good about it. No cap. <laughs> no zero cat. And same. Nah, I mean that thing bling. Feel pretty slash. good about Jordan's five and a half because he, he doesn't rate much the stuff album that like we pick above a five. Really? Yeah. Shut up! I'm I trying. I'm, kinda... I'm trying to hear Nick. Nick, what'd you say? I said. I said. I said, <laughs> I said, said you a big uh, Samuel. <laughs> I said Samuel should should take your rating and like like take it to heart because you don't rate much stuff that Jamie and I pick higher than a five. So five and oh, a yeah. half. Like, yeah, no, this is in oh, the I do. Um, this is in the upper. This is tied for fifth or sixth of Jordan's overall ratings. It's tied with sound and color. 
Really? Yeah. There's like, I mean, there there was a time where like I would listen to Fall Out Boy on the radio if it came on, like actually enjoy mm-hmm. their stuff. So again, it's just kind of tapping into that stuff that like I wouldn't normally listen to because the I just like zone. rap so much. No, n- n- not not even nostalgia. I don't think it is. It's just like I will always listen to rap over something else. But when I do listen to something that I enjoy, that like I have to kind of, I still like enjoy it. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to explain that. I was wondering how much you were going to like this, Jordan, just because I knew coming into this, I had heard that rock is definitely not your favorite genre. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah, it, it definitely helped that it's pop yeah. punk and not just like straight rock because yeah. few, I'm, I still don't know. I don't think I've ever even, other than like the one or two really mainstream songs, like ACDC, I couldn't name, I couldn't even name a song right now. Like I know the there's that one popular song. Is is TNT by it? Yes. 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 Okay. Whoo! Wow. Yeah, that's dude, a lot more than one popular song. By He's on a roll, TNT. baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. That's why I was. Uh, I was like, you know, shaking. I was like, Am I gonna get this right? But uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I I don't really listen to a lot of You're rock. Shaking at and the knees. I know people like. Yes, my shoe. No, my knees were shaking. But I I know people when people talk about rock too, they usually talk about a lot older rock as well, like. Like those, those were the good, the good centuries, you know. Yeah, Dwayne, good old rock, but uh, yeah. No, I actually, I actually enjoyed this because it, it was a little, it was a little newer too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's twenty nineteen. Yeah. This, this is fresh out the the musical womb. Oh, I thought that was like <laughs> fresh bread or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that brings the overall average to a six. Point seven five, and it is nineteenth overall. Nineteen out of thirty-one. We'll take it. Not bad. Guess who finally made a ranking column in the spreadsheet? (laughs) Hey, (laughs) nice. Turns out there's a function for that. (laughs) Oh, really? That's that's actually. And I will never have a rating not be accurate again in the in the math. How do you know? Because I made an if statement. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, Jamie can't do math. Excel do the math. Man, who knew that these industry level tools were like functional? So, so. Functional. <laughs> um, if yeah. So I guess it actually works. With that, I can announce. So this was like the first of its of its kind. You know, we haven't done any pop punk or either pop mm-hmm. or punk. Uh, and I feel like even though we've done indie in the past, we're re- we're going into new waters because next week we're going to be bringing our barking friend Zach on, <laughs> and we are going to be doing "I Think You Think Too Much of Me" by Eden, which I think is technically an EP. I don't think it's technically an album, so that's also okay. a first. But we are going to be doing I Think You Think Too Much of Me by the Irishman? I think. He's Irish. Eden. Beat Skeeto, as he's also known. <laughs> <laughs> Only by us. <laughs> um, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be exciting. We'll get Zach on here. We'll see if he'll bark on Mike, you know. Um... Nick's going to do the required task of putting Samuel down after this. You know, don't, you don't have to worry about that, audience. Uh, he'll be taken <laughs> care of. Yeah, it's, it's a running um, thing that we... I just get shot. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you got to get... Yeah, every guest gets put Sorry, down. Sorry, you're finding so a... If you're, yeah. if you're a recurring ghost, you're a ghost. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so, sorry if you're... Sorry you're just finding out about this right now. Right when we're Yeah, it's really unfortunate that he didn't tell you beforehand. Cost. Of being on this podcast is death. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't. You know, we can't think about it's it all because you were in just wait, 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 wait. Would do it. But I figured. Yeah. We just, just think about. No, 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 no. If you, <laughs> if you, if you want to keep living, you don't have the opportunity of doing this podcast. But if you, I, mm-hmm. I, it's my personal opinion that this podcast is worth is the, worth more than life. The end of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Just to record it once. Exactly, Nick. 
this exactly. this podcast is worth the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, indeed, indeed. So I'm I I'm, I hope you enjoyed your uh, tenure, Sam, because your your time on Earth is uh, going very nearer to end. <laughs> Probably about um, five minutes away. Yeah. So, so what have what uh, what have you guys been listening to other than this album this week? For me, it's uh, been a lot of bluegrass. Heck yeah! Did you listen to any green grass? I listen to green grass and high tides. It's <laughs> a good song. Oh gosh! Sorry, I cracked my oh, I cracked <laughs> myself. <off. laughs> Sorry, you cracked I your cracked pants. <laughs> Dumbass. Oh god. <laughs> Shut the fuck. Um, sorry. You can you can continue, Jamie. Uh, bluegrass and is that, is that it or? Yeah, dude. Literally, like, which is one of the least um. Going with this kind of music, I can think of, but. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, no. Never mind. Never mind. Yes. No. Yes. I've been listening to uh, "Hard to Handle." Just that song. By the Black Crows. By the Black Crows. Because Keep It Between the Lines off of Sturgill's newest album, the rhythm is done the same where he goes, and that makes me always think of uh, the same rhythm and hard to handle. Um, So I've been listening to that song a lot. Every time I listen to Sturgill, I listen to Keep It Between the Lines because it's my favorite on that album. And then I queue up hard to handle because I go, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you're, you're talking about the bluegrass there version, right? Yes. Yeah, I've been listening Gosh. to it regularly. The, that, I, that I think I like the regular one even the more. The song's got a lot of good life lessons. Yeah. Don't turn mailboxes into baseballs. The only word you need to know in life is why. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of these songs, guys. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, but me. Jamie's actually the lead singer of the Black Crows. <laughs> but I've uh, I've been They're listening. They're a Georgian to... band. Yeah, I had to figure out what you said for a second there. Georgian. So, uh, I've been listening to a little uh, bit of you know heady I'm music about now. because I've been, <laughs> I've been. Shut the hell! <laughs> I've been watching. Uh, uh, like some YouTube videos about like best albums of the year by like Fantano and this dude named Deep Cuts. Who My I'm going to like you okay. Fantano. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to object to it anymore. It's just part of my identity now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Whether you his, wanted his, or not. his favorite album of the year was like really surprising to me. I listened to a couple songs off of it and I like it, but it's it's almost like a disco like 70s throwback album. I think it's by Jesse Ware is her name. Um, I don't even know. Let me find it really quick. I hadn't heard of it until I heard him talk about it. But yeah, it's called oh, shit. What's I, Your Pleasure by dude, Jesse Ware. This, al- this episode's coming out on New Year's. I meant to ask everyone to make a top five album of the year list. And I uh, mm. forgot. So. <laughs> um, we'll tweak we can that, do I it guess. next week. Oh yeah, we, we can do that too. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to a little bit of uh, Fiona Apple, some Radiohead. I'm excited because I've been chronologically listening to Radiohead's albums, and I'm I'm just about to listen to In Rainbows. And whenever I listen to it, I'm just gonna sit down somewhere and listen to it and like not do anything because I've heard it's like their best album. And I I haven't to be like okay like real deep like that. Yeah, kind of. I haven't <laughs> like <laughs> I I haven't like super thoroughly enjoyed the last three that i've listened to but i really liked their like uh their their first three were pretty good kid a is pretty good and then amnesiac i didn't like a whole lot hail to the thief was pretty good but i'd like to listen to it again but in rainbows i feel like i'm okay. gonna like a lot because i there's already like two songs on there that i've heard before and i really liked but yeah also thrown in nice. some mac miller uh Sizz's new single good days and I, I need to listen to a whole lot of red too Oh, I need to listen to that too. I haven't done it yet, but I can't. I can't listen to it the same way I listen to Radiohead. Like, is that Cardi's whole lot new of album? ass? Yeah, uh-huh. whole lot of skips. Do people like oh. it or do they hate it? I can't tell. <laughs> no, people don't really like it. I, I've uh, I've heard people like 
first impressions, I saw some people say they liked the second half more than the first half. And now I'm seeing people okay. say, like, the more they listen to it, like, it just they enjoy the majority of the songs. But they could just be Cardi stands. I don't know. And then I've seen other people who were like, yo, the production is incredible for a rap album on everything. And I was like, why is no one else saying that then? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I just listened, looked at the reviews five minutes after it went live and everybody was like, yo, dude, this shit sucks so Bro, bad. Five minutes, haven't even listened to two full songs yet. I know, I know. I, it wasn't actually five minutes, okay? It was, it was after the album was released. Let's, for let's see what Pitchfork period. says. Oh, well, you know, Pitchfork, he's going to mix bag. What? How? What's the What's the rating? It's a, it's a, it's pop star. It's, I mean, it's a movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's, he's talking about a, a line from the movie Pop Star that Andy Samberg says. I cannot even remember what the what. Sorry, what? what, what we'll is talk about it after the podcast. We're not going to talk <laughs> about it. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> anyway, can, can I say what I've been listening to, bro? Yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, good, good. Poppy is smoking. <laughs> Popper ten, smoker ten. That's what I've been listening to, bro. His his ghost is pissed right now that you just said that. Dude, stop! I hate you guys. <laughs> it's not even. Can't even joke about that, bro. It ain't even been a year yet. Just just wait till the anniversary. My Snap story gonna be or my my Insta story gonna go crazy. You're gonna be wearing your shirt, crazy. crying. Honestly, I might actually post. Should I post a picture? Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome if I posted a picture. Wow. Okay, I, I need to stop talking. Like, <laughs> be like, rest in peace, my boy. It, no, it, it actually is really sad. But uh, I've been listening to, like Pop Smoke um, again. Spotify. I'm learning how to use Spotify again. Some things. I'm, I'm finding out what I like and don't like yeah, and hard. stuff. Um, what else? Oh, I, I started listening to. Daft Punk a little bit more too. Oh heck yeah! Like the harder, better, faster, stronger. I like I like Around the World a lot too. Oh, I've always liked that song. Um, I need to get more into them though, just because I like I like a couple of their songs and I feel like I'd like more if I listened to them, but I have not listened to them. Bro, so again, just a lot a lot of rap too. Pharrell's, uh, you know, he's the one who does the chorus lines of "Get Lucky." He did that as like a demo, to and he really? sent it to him. They were like, "Oh hey, you want to like get on this beat or something?" <laughs> and he was like, yeah, what about this? And then he didn't hear anything from them. And they're like, yeah, it's on the record. And he was like, what? I could have done like, <laughs> we just, we, a we better just production seven minute and song everything. And they were like, 30 seconds. They're like, yeah, no, that was, it was good enough. He didn't Dang, find out until dude, he saw crazy. them next. And he was like, yeah, so do I need to redo that? And they were like, oh, the record's out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. He Sometimes on, it'd be fun to like work in that industry where you're just yeah, like. I listened to an interview oh. with him on uh, Broken Record with Rick Rubin and, uh. He talked about that, and he was just like, he didn't know until the rest of the world did that he was on that song. Dang. It's a good song. Yeah, like the lead it's, single it's from the album. Song. It was a song of the summer for like, what was that, 2014, The whole summer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Samuel. Sam- what have I been listening to? Yeah. Um, what have you been listening I've to? I've been listening to a lot to a band named Periphery. They're like, uh, they're part of them. very mu- they're a lot harder than in her own words they're like metal but also they're subclassified kind of into gent which is very hard to explain and i'm not even going to try to explain it but <laughs> nah, bro does it gent i get it gent i'm a, i'm 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 familiar with genting yeah wait i honestly i don't know if he's just shit like no shit. no it, it's a thing it's like you see, it's like a meme yeah, it's like, like an a, older meme from guitar internet. Yeah, it's like shit. The gent does it like, gent. The word gent is like the sound that the guitar makes or something. I don't know. Yeah, H- hard Ooh. to explain. But okay. I've been listening a lot to them, and um, I don't know. I've I've been listening a lot to um like Illinium, like their like club music kind of like dance music stuff. If I'm just like doing stuff around mm-hmm. the house, or that was when I was doing homework a lot. But I also just kind of like that stuff. Um. My anime openings playlist. I've been listening to that a lot. <laughs> weeb. Uh, weeb. Self-proclaimed weeb. Weeb. You let, you let it out at the end of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> weeb. But just... Right. Yes. It's better than my... My sister listens to show tunes. I can't do that either. Show tunes? Yeah, like uh, uh, musicals. Is. Listen to oh, like the okay. soundtracks of them. Gotcha. 
it, you know, it's it's people like it. Not for me. Yeah. At all. But I can listen to the La, yeah. to the La La Land soundtrack, but that's about it. Oh, you said Lion King on Broadway? <laughs> so close. <laughs> It's crazy that you said Broadway and it sounded like land. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> um, it must have been your accent coming through. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess with that, we can wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Samuel, what do you want to tell the listener about the new year, the uh, uh, 2021? What What is your opening words to them? I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> In the spirit of the album that we just listened to, or that we just analyzed, I'm going to say give rock a chance. <laughs> Heck yeah. Guitar music's give not rock, dead, baby. Give rock a chance. 2021. <laughs> Nick, who who should our listeners tell to listen to this? What what kind of person should they tell to listen to this episode? Oh, yeah. Um, man, I don't... Uh, you don't have to tell chop your, this up t- here. <laughs> let's, uh, let's say grandma... Tell tell grandmas to listen grandma. to this show. <laughs> Doesn't have to be your grandma. A uh, grandma. Them. All uh, of them. Yeah. Any any sixty five year old woman you see in the grocery store. Yep. Because only only sixty five year old women can be grandmas. Well, it's just like there's a higher chance. <laughs> what if they're not the a grandma? Are higher, Would that make them know? feel bad? Like, what if they want to be a grandma? We're thinking too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we just wanted to say thanks again for listening this week. And remember to tune in to next week's episode where we're going to be taking a look at I Think You Think Too Much of Me by Eden with our friend Zach. Uh, be sure, you know, check it out so you can kind of have your own thoughts and mentally join in the discussion a little bit. Um, you know, feel free to either leave a comment about your thoughts on this week's album or just the episode in general or us if you want to talk about us. Uh, you know, throw those up on YouTube or you can also tweet them at us. Um, we're on Twitter at, at list up podcast and that account as well as our personal handles are going to be in the description of wherever you found this episode. Uh, for now, we'll catch you next week and remember to listen up. Listen up.